Thanks for joining us guys and welcome to the Power Platform in real life. Today we'll see the release pipeline in action triggered after merging the code to the release branch. This is a follow up on the part 1 video, if you haven't seen that yet have a look. It shows everything we'll build together. In this scenario the release pipeline will be triggered when the code is merged to the release branch. As we saw in the previous video, the build pipeline will export from dev environment to a temporary branch and then merge the developed branch, or directly merge the developed branch, depending on how you'd like to handle it. We always prefer to export to a temporary branch and then merge to develop, but this is your call at the end of the day. Whatever is the approach that you prefer to do, at some point, your solutions and data files will be in the develop branch. Let's take a quick look at our develop branch in the repository. We have a trigger release pipeline YAML and a release pipeline YAML. One is to automatically trigger when the code is merged to the branch, where the other handles the execution of the release. We'll see them in detail soon, but just as a heads up, if you don't want it to trigger automatically, all you have to do is to trigger the release pipeline manually. There is also an import solution template and an import data template. They will be called at the right moment from the release pipeline to import the solution and or data. To the target environment. Before we run the pipeline, let's quickly compare the develop branch with the release branch. Under solutions in the develop branch, we have a core solution version 6.23 and a flow solution version 6.18. In the release branch, we have a core solution 6.18 and a flow solution 6.18. Also, the extracted data from core data schema in develop was changed on February 5th wherein the release branch was changed on January 31st. The trigger pipeline will automatically detect that the core solution and the extracted data from the core data schema has been changed. Let's create a PR from develop to release. Before approving the PR, we can check the differences between the branches. So here you can see that the core solution has been changed from the version 6.18 to the 6.23, and the core data schema extracted data was changed on the February 5th. Let's complete the PR and merge the changes to the release branch. The trigger pipeline detected differences between the branches and then called the release pipeline passing the required parameters that were automatically detected. The release pipeline will use the parameters and orchestrate the deployment to the Dynamics 365 environment. It will call two other pipelines when applicable, the import solution pipeline and the import data pipeline. The import solution pipeline imports the solution to the target Dynamics 365 environment. The core solution is successfully imported to the environment. Now the release pipeline will resume and call the import data pipeline. And the import data pipeline imports the data to the target Dynamics 365 environment. Voila! We got our data and solution imported to the environment. Let's check the solution in both environments. Looking at the dev environment first, our core solution is version 6.23. And now checking on test, which is our target environment, our core solution is now also 6.23. That's awesome! Let's take a look now on the data. We have our account for demo and dev. And we have the account for demo in the test environment as well. Just checking the GUIDs of the record. This is the GUID in test. And this is the exact same GUID in dev. So let's take a look at the code. Just a quick reminder, this isn't supposed to be a silver bullet that works for all scenarios, but hopefully it helps on your project. We'll go a bit fast through the code. So if you're building your pipeline, please feel free to pause the video, rewind, and take a look at the code in more detail. Let's see all the pipelines we have. We have the build pipeline, trigger, release, import solution, and import data pipelines. All those pipelines come from the YAML files we saw. We open the code of each one of those pipelines in the tabs over here. So it makes it easier for us to see it. So the trigger pipeline will have its trigger set up to the release branch. And it will include the Dynamics 365 solution and Dataverse data folders. Which means whenever something changes on those two folders, the trigger release pipeline will get triggered automatically. The exclude tag over here just means that if anything is actually changed to the pipelines folder, it will not trigger this pipeline. 
we're going to use the variable group common. Hope you've seen our variable group video. The very first thing it will do is to detect the source branch that is being changed. So this is pretty much a map between what branch deploys to what target environment in Dynamics. The next step will execute a git diff and detect all the differences between the two branches. It will create an array variable of the data schemas to deploy and the solutions to deploy. Then we're going to detect the release pipeline ID because on the very next step, we have to call it. By the way, this is a workaround in order to be able to call another pipeline and pass an object as a pattern meter. Unfortunately, there is no other supported way else than doing that. We have to call it as an API and pass the pattern meters in its payload. And that's what's going to call the release pipeline. So the release pipeline will receive the pattern meters from the trigger pipeline. Those are, should we deploy solutions? What are the solutions to deploy? Should we deploy data? What are the data to deploy? And what environment are the target environments we're talking about? We'll recreate the target environment variable, get the build pipeline ID, then we're going to detect what's the latest solution number in the branch. We're also getting the import template pipeline ID, download the pipeline artifacts of the run that we previously detected. After downloading it, we're going to loop through all the solutions that are in the artifact. Now we create the target environment array and call the import solution pipeline using the same method as before, a REST API call. Now the process is very similar if we want to deploy data. If the pattern meter deploy data is equal true, we're going to build the variable what environments to deploy, detect what's the schema XML file that needs to be used, get the import data pipeline ID, build the target environments array, and then call the import data pipeline. The import solution pipeline will get the pattern meters from the release pipeline, and then for each environment to deploy, it will download the artifacts, install the DevOps tool. By the way, we talked about the DevOps tool last video. And then for each managed solution downloaded from the pipeline run artifacts, it will run a simple PowerShell command to check a few variables and finally deploy it. Now the import data pipeline is actually pretty similar. It will get the pattern meters from the release pipeline when you call it, and then you start a stage with a loop for each environment. You will install the DevOps tools, pack the data that is in the repository, publish the packed data as an artifact, and then use each one of those data artifacts to import to the target. That's the release pipeline, folks. It will deploy your solutions and data in a consistent and repeatable way. One of the biggest benefits is that all your target environments will behave the same way as long as the process is followed. You may want to tweak or improve the YAML code depending on your scenario, and that's totally fine. Hopefully these videos help you with most of the tools you need to get a kick deployment in Dynamics 365. All the best.